Hi guys, my name is Diana, and welcome to another episode of Inno Games TV. Remember last month's show? Well, we're finally announcing the winner of the tablet competition. But before we do that, let's go right to the overview. Elvenor starts the show off with the unveiling of their gameplay trailer. Afterwards, I finally reveal the winner of the tablet competition. In addition, Forge of Empires introduces their anticipated new age, Tomorrow. On their end, Tribal Wars 2 shows off their TV spot, while Tribal Wars lead community manager, Toma, describes the Rescue the Royalty event. Last but not least, the West backend developer, Yannick, answers some community questions. Like many of you, I've grown to love Timon and Oliver's Elvenar videos, but this month, they bring you something completely new, their gameplay trailer. So let's check it out. Enter an enchanted world. Build a magical kingdom full of fantastical creatures. Or create an advanced metropolis home to savvy explorers. Trade rare goods with your neighbors and expand your city. Explore new lands, discover hidden secrets, and challenge ferocious monsters. Step into the battleground and test your skill against a variety of enemies. Embark on an enchanting journey through the lands of Elvenar. Now it's time to reveal the winner of our tablet competition. But before I do that, I wanted to thank you guys for the overwhelming amount of responses we got from you guys. It was really, really hard to pick a winner, but someone had to do it. So without further ado, and I'm really sorry if I butcher your name, the winner is Andre Kesha. So Andre, we'll get in touch with you and you'll receive your tablet. Now let's move on to Forge of Empires with Pear introducing the Tomorrow Era. Forge fans, my name is Per Kröger, I'm one of your game designers, and I have exciting new content to show to you today, tomorrow. For the first time in the history of Forge, we leave the borders of reality behind us and take a glimpse into the future, although it is the near future. This is how we envision the world of tomorrow. It's a world of surveillance, cameras are everywhere, Security patrols are on every corner. Big Brother is watching you. This theme is reflected in all of the new buildings that we created, and they give your whole city a kind of, kind of dark, cyberpunky look. This is also reflected in the battles, because for the first time they're fought in cities. Between houses, on the streets, there's rubble and ruins everywhere. Look at the new units that um, will dominate the battlefield. Here is the Ultra AP, a devastating unit that drops into combat and retaliating against every attack it takes. Then we have the Combat Drone, a really fast unit that can soar through the sky and attack almost everywhere, any unit at once. The Stealth Tank, an impressive weapon of destruction. This tank is hidden on planes, which means you have to get into close combat or use a unit which has the blast skill. Okay, and here we have one, the Mobile Microwave Gun. This is kind of the counter unit against the Stealth Tank. This very fast artillery piece um, it shoots microwaves and it comes with a new ability, it's called heat. Whenever a unit is hit by the heat ability, it loses 20% of its attack value. Then we have the antimaterial sniper. Put him in a house and watch him take down unit after unit with his awesome long-ranged attack. So I promise you with all these new units you're gonna enjoy many and exciting new combats. Of course there is a big new portion of the tech tree added with lots of exciting new stuff for you to unlock, great new buildings and all the units we just saw. So spend your forge points here, or you spend them for our new great buildings. Here's the first one of those, which actually features a great new ability. It's called Aid Goods. And Aid Goods gives you a good whenever you aid a building. So when you motivate or polish a building, you get one good from the era of that building. That means, you can choose which good you want to get by polishing or motivating a building of that era. So, sounds pretty good, especially if you're hunting down the remaining goods for a great building or 
uh, negotiation costs or you're participating in guild versus guild. All right, so let's take a look at the new campaign map. Here we go, plenty of new provinces for you to acquire, plenty of new people to meet. And if you follow the storyline, it's kind of like James Bondish. Um, you'll have to get to the bottom of a criminal syndicate and figure out who's the evil mastermind behind it all. So people, watch out for all the great new content that is waiting for you and explore the city of tomorrow. All right, Forge fans, that's it with our new game age tomorrow. I hope you're going to enjoy it and don't forget, always watch your back. From the Tomorrow era to the medieval battles in Travel Wars 2, recently we released a very cool TV spot for the game. So enjoy it! Fight your enemies, conquer their cities, and expand your empire. In the Play Store or at TribalWars2.com. Strike back at TribalWars2.com. Let's stay in the medieval times and go straight to Tribal Wars, where Toma introduces you their upcoming event, Rescue the Royalty. Greetings, I am Toma, the lead community manager of Tribal Wars. I wanted to talk about our upcoming event, Rescue the Royalty. Some of you might remember it from last year. We made some improvements to make it more interesting and easy to join. Let's have a look. You will first get a pop-up explaining how the event works. After that, you can open the event screen from the village overview by clicking here. Please note that the graphics display here might not be the final version. Everything you have to do for the event is on that screen. The aim of Rescue's Royalty is to find the different princes and princesses captured by monsters and hidden in caves. The first thing to do is to explore one of these caves. Each type takes a different time. Once a cave is explored, you will see the monster hidden inside. You need then to decide what type of unit you want to send to defeat the monster. Be careful, only one unit from the list can defeat the monster. When you successfully defeat the monster, you will rescue the captured prince or princess. You have rooms for the royal guest here. Different types of princes and princesses can be found and they each bring different bonuses. You can choose to activate the member of the royalty or dismiss it if you are not interested by the service provided. You can only have one royal member active at a time. If you choose to activate it, it will stay at your service providing the bonus for 8 hours. You will be able to extend the time or make the bonus stronger. To do so you can use silver, which is a new currency available only for the event. You will get a small amount per day but the best way to gather silver is doing the daily quests related with the event. We also have achievements related to the event, so you should try to defeat as many monsters as possible. The event will last for two weeks, and when the event ends, it will not be possible to activate new buffs, and the existing buffs will be deactivated. Okay, this is how the event works. It's coming soon in the game. Don't hesitate to ask your tribe mates or go to the forum to know which units defeat the monsters or what bonuses the royal members bring. Get ready to rescue the royalty and use it to your advantage in the game. See you soon! Now, let's mix things up and go to the times of the Wild West, where my super friendly colleague Yannick answers some of your questions. Thanks Diana for the nice introduction. My name is Yannick and I'm one of the backend developers of the West. Today I'm here to answer some of your questions and the first question is, After finishing school, there are basically two ways to enter the gaming industry. The first way is to do an apprenticeship, which is more practical. The second way is to continue studying and work as a dual student. I personally chose the first way. I started an apprenticeship in 2012 and finished my apprenticeship in the beginning of 2015. Now I'm working as a back-end developer for Inner Games. In general, we have two different types of developers at InnoGames, front-end developers and back-end developers. Now, you might wonder what the difference between these two is, and the item upgrading which we implemented a few weeks ago is a perfect example to show the differences. If you look at the item upgrading, our front-end developers are responsible for implementing all kinds of screens and visual components, while I, as a back-end developer, am responsible for implementing all kinds of logic, 
like checking if an item is actually upgradable. To sum it up, our front-end developers implement the visual components and I make these visual components work. Yes, I play the game actively on a few worlds, mostly on beta, and I usually stick to a heavy construction-based skill set, which leads me to my favorite features, which are towns and alliances, but also adventures, so basically any feature that allows me to interact with other players. I started playing the game almost five years ago, and what I really like about it is its peaceful nature, which allows me to work on my character without being interrupted by other players. But what I also like about the game is that now as a developer, I can work on improving it and improving the gaming experience for our players. First of all, we extended our testing periods on beta, and we also decided to bring back the in-game changelog to be more transparent about our updates. We also implemented code reviews into our development process, which means that all finished tasks like bug fixes or new features have to be approved by another developer. To complement that, we also implemented QA reviews, which means that all new features are being tested more intensively before being released to public. We are working on a number of improvements, like achievements and new items for the veteran shop, and we are looking for new ideas constantly, so send us yours on the forum, which we are actively reading, especially on beta. Okay guys, that was it. I hope I answered your questions and see you in game. So that was it for the May episode of Inno Games TV. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook and Twitter. We'll make sure to bring you the latest news on all our games. Bye and auf Wiedersehen!